All right, welcome to another episode of Mad English TV. Today we're going to take a look at two idioms about integrity. Do you know what integrity is? How would you define integrity? Let me know down in the comments. I think a lot of people think integrity means honesty. And that's that's right. I mean, that's not a bad definition. Um, I would define integrity as maybe something a little bit more than just honesty. Okay, I would say it, it has to do with your values lining up with your actions. Okay, what are your values? Let me know your values down in the comments. Give me some examples of your values. You know, everybody has, has certain values, right? And when our values line up with our actions, they it's like it makes us a person of honesty, right? It's like a, a good person. When you when you can see someone's, if they have good values, I mean, if they have bad values, that's another story. You know, if someone's values are really good and their actions match their values, um, that's that's a good thing. You know, imagine if you're, if your value is like saving money, let's say that's one of your values, like being really smart with your money, making good, wise financial decisions. Okay, you say that's your value. But then you're always wasting your money, you're buying useless stuff. Well, then your actions aren't aren't lining up with your values, right? I mean, maybe another way to say it would be is if your words line up with your actions right? It's so easy to say stuff, right? And it's harder to, it's harder to actually do it. So very often, very often our actions don't line up with our words. Maybe for you, maybe that's, maybe this is true where, where it does line up. Maybe you're a person of integrity. I'm sure most of my subscribers are people of integrity. That's just the feeling I get. Let me know if I'm wrong. You guys are great. I love you guys so much. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for always watching my videos, for smashing like and leaving nice comments and stuff. I really appreciate it so much. Um, so uh, I was just going to say, you can, when, when you're describing something like this, right, words line up with your actions, right? Um, you can say two things here. You can say, you can say it two ways, right? You can say it in line with or line up with. Okay, if your words, um, well, let me ask it in a question form, okay? Uh, you could say, uh, I could ask you, okay, do your, do your words line up with your actions? Okay, so do, right? Here I would say, are your words in line with your actions? And I can hear a loud plane flying over my house. Can you hear it? Can you hear me whispering? All right. So you can say either of these and just when you use it in like a question form, it's a little bit different. We just, I mean, the word, the, the starting word is here. It's are. Okay. Are your words in line with your actions? Do your words line up with your actions? Okay. So just kind of a, a little bit of a, just a little bit of a different word there. And it just means to match. Right. If 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 something kind of matches going like line up with right, if something lines up with something else, it's like that. It's like like parallel. Right. Whereas if your words and your actions don't line up, I means kind of they're going different directions. They're, they're not matching. Right. So, you know, that's why sometimes people say talk is cheap. Right. Because it's so easy to just say whatever you want you know, oh, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that, or I believe in this, that, like, you know, talk is cheap. <laughs> That's what people say sometimes. Actually, it's not cheap. But the reason people say talk is cheap is because, well, you know, actions speak louder than words, right? So people often say this, you know, actions speak louder than words. Because, I mean, there are a lot of people in the world, right, who say, something and then but their actions don't line up with it right so it's good if, you, if your actions line up with your words because that means well that, that shows people that you're a person of integrity right and it's it's good to be a person of integrity you know integrity is one of the probably like one of the best character traits 
you know, if we think about all the best character traits, you know, like what kind of a person do you want to marry or what kind of a friend do you want to have? You know, you want to have people of integrity. That means they're, they're not going to manipulate you. They're not going to say one thing and do something else. They're, they're like people of integrity. They're like really good people, honest people, right? Um, so the first idiom I want to teach you today is uh, to put your money where your mouth is. Okay, now this is a great idiom. Put your money where your mouth is. All it means, guys, I hear another plane flying over my house. It's distracting me. <laughs> so uh, to put your money where your mouth is means you 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 put your money where your mouth is, right? It's it's self-explanatory, right? It's 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 an idiom, but it it makes sense. Some idioms don't make any sense. You have to learn the idiom. Like, for example, let the cat out of the bag. That idiom, let the cat out of the bag, has nothing to do with cats or bags. It means to to reveal a secret, right? If you if you tell someone something that is supposed to be a secret, right? Like, uh, if you tell me a secret, and I'm supposed to keep it a secret, but then I tell someone else, then I let the cat out of the bag. Very often we use it to ruin a surprise. Like if something like ruins a surprise, like if you're having a surprise birthday party and, uh, and I don't know, you find out somehow somebody lets the cat out of the bag. Someone tells you, Hey, it's, uh, it's your, you're going to have a lot of friends over tonight. It, so get ready. You know, if it's supposed to be a secret, it's the person ruined it. All right, so then the person let the cat out of the bag by revealing the secret, All right? So an idiom like that, it's impossible to know what it means. If you're trying to learn English, you'd read that idiom and think, what is this about a cat and a bag, right? But this idiom, it actually makes sense. It's self-explanatory. If something kind of just makes sense itself, you can say it's self-explanatory. Okay, so put your money where your mouth is, right? If you're always talking about something and you're not actually spending your, your money on it, well, there's a bit of a problem, right? I'll give you an example here. Um, so Canadian politicians always promise to provide clean water to First Nations reserves. Okay, they need to start putting their money where their mouth is. All right, I'll read that again. Canadian politicians always promise to provide clean water to First Nations reserves. So a reserve is the land that is owned by the, the First Nations people. Like a group of, of, of First Nations people live on a piece of land and that's called a reserve. It's their land. It's like almost like a separate country in a way. Um, there are different laws that apply to like First Nations people um, compared with like European descent people like myself. So maybe you didn't know that. I wasn't planning to talk about that in this lesson, but um, I'll just give you one example for like hunting. Okay. Uh, you know, if I want to get into hunting, I need to have a, like a license or I don't know. I don't even know how to hunt. All right. I've, I've never gone hunting before. I don't really know exactly what I need. You need to buy certain things to, to allow you to hunt, right? But First Nations people don't need a license. They can just hunt on their land, right? They can, they can, uh, whatever they, however they want to hunt, let's say a bow and arrow, like they used to, you know, use back in the day, a bow and arrow, and they hunt a deer or a moose or something like that. They don't need a license here in Canada. So there are some different rules. It's, it's almost like, you know, First Nations reserves are almost like a little bit of a different country where it's kind of some some different laws apply so anyway um so so actually this is this is um very true in my experience you know all my life i've heard politicians say this every time there's an election you know all the candidates start you know debating and say we need to do we're going to do this for the people or that they always say this provide clean water to First Nations reserves, like clean drinking water or whatever. I don't know. They always, like every election I can remember my whole life, they've been saying this, they've been talking about this problem. So, you know, you could say they need to start putting their money where their mouth is, right? Because they're always talking about it, 
but they're never doing anything about it, right? For like 20 years, I've heard this. 30 years, right? People have been talking about this, but nothing ever happens. So this is a perfect example where you could use this idiom. They need to start putting their money where their mouth is. All right, so um, the next idiom I want to teach you is skin in the game. Skin in the game. Have you ever heard this idiom? It's kind of a related idea. Okay, skin in the game means if you're directly involved and like personally involved in a situation. Okay, so directly and personally involved. So let's say these two guys here, right? They have, um, well, they talk about the stock market. Let's say this is the stock market. <clears throat> do you have any, do you own any stocks in the stock market? Let me know which stocks you own down in the comments. So those two guys talk about the stock market. Only this guy actually has money invested in the stock market. That guy doesn't have any money. He's never invested in the stock market before. All right. So we could say that guy has skin in the game. He has skin in the game because like he has some some he's personally invested into a stock, a company, let's say like Tesla or whatever. OK, so he owns Tesla stock, right? So he's he's kind of he's got his own his, his own money like he could lose or he could he could make money or he could lose money. Right. So it's kind of a risk. So he's taking a personal risk. So he's got skin in the game. Whereas this guy, he doesn't have any skin in the game. So, you know, if you're, let's say you want to invest in stocks, who would you listen to? Would you take advice from that guy or from that guy? Well, probably it would be better to take advice from this guy, right? Because he kind of, he's actually, he's actually in it, right? So he has something more to lose. So, you know, with the idiom skin in the game, there's another plane flying over. I'll try not to let it distract me this time. And so if you have skin in the game, what is skin and what is the game? I'm not sure. You know, very often native English speakers don't know what an idiom really means. Why it, Why those words? Skin in the game? Skin, right? I mean, you have skin on your, your body in the game. What game? Is it a sports game? I don't know. Like, you know, when I think about the idiom, um, I think it might, it could come from sports because, you know, I don't know if you've ever watched football, American football, where they, I don't know why it's called football. You, you throw the ball with your hand. It should be called handball, but that's actually a different sport <laughs> called handball. But um, the football is made out of a skin. I think it's a pig skin. Pig skin or a yeah, I think it's people call it a pig skin. The don't quote me on that. I think it's I think that's what it is. OK, so the skin in the game. So the game is like a, the sport, right? Football. It could come from there. I'm not sure. So skin in the I don't know, to be honest, I don't know. But it's just sometimes native English speakers don't even know where an idiom comes from. We don't know. The, I don't know the history of English. I just know the meaning of, of the idiom, right? So, so yeah, skin in the game. Here's another example. Let's say, you know, let's say that guy's a politician and this guy is just an honest farmer and this farmer wants to sell his wheat to the U.S. Let's say he's in Canada, right? He wants to sell his wheat to some American buyers and the politician says, no, you're not allowed to do that. We're going to make a rule saying you're not allowed to sell your wheat outside Canada. So... It hurts this guy, right? Because this is just the, the honest, the simple farmer. He's got his, he's got skin in the game, right? It's going to affect him personally. Whatever the politician decides, whatever the rule he makes, it's, it's going to affect him. He doesn't really have skin in the game. You know, it's interesting. Politicians rarely lose their jobs. If they make bad rules, I mean, maybe if they do it enough for a long enough time, um, they, they, I guess they, they, they might lose their job. But if I think about the pandemic over the past two years here in Canada, I don't think any politicians have really lost their jobs. It's normal people who have lost their jobs, right? It's like people with businesses who have, people have gone out of business because their business was forced to close, you know? So these people have skin in the game. 
politicians just just make more and more money. I think Canadian politicians even voted to increase their salaries over the pandemic. <laughs> Isn't that criminal? That's crazy. A politician, everybody else is struggling and suffering and you sign yourself a pay raise. It's, this world's not, not a fair world, my friends. Sometimes it's a cruel world where politicians get all the money and poor farmers get nothing. <laughs> right? So, so that, yeah, that's what it means to have skin in the game. So any, anything, anytime you're kind of invested in a situation, um, you know, if one person, like the farmer could tell the politician, well, you've got, you don't have anything to worry about. You don't have any skin in the game. For me, this affects me and my family. This is real, this is real life, right? It affects me. I've got skin in the game. You don't have any skin in the game. So, yeah, you know, like, again, this is kind of related to integrity, right? Like, if, if a person actually owns something or they kind of, they're personally involved in, in a situation, then they are, they're just, they're more connected to it. You know, actually, um, there's a, uh, an airline called WestJet here in Canada. And for a long time, I think for maybe like 10 years, their slogan was, owners care all right and the idea was that this comp this airline westjet offered its employees um a stock option <clears throat> losing my voice so this the company westjet offered its employees like a stock option program where they were they were able to to put part of their paycheck toward westjet stock and then the company would match that stock. All right, so let's say your paycheck is like, let's say $1,000. Well, actually, okay, let's say if you're a full-time employee at WestJet, realistically, you know, your paycheck would be at least probably $3,000. So let's use real, <laughs> real money. I won't just make up numbers. So it, it would probably be about $3,000, maybe $4,000 per month that you would make, maybe even higher. I'm not sure. <clears throat> let's say it was, let's say it was $3,000. You might have the option, guys, I'm losing my voice again. <laughs> I'm getting hoarse. Can you hear my voice? That's called hoarse. I need to cough to clear my... <coughs> <clears throat> All right. Let's hope for the best. Let's hope I can power my way through this video. <laughs> so uh, let's say your paycheck is $3,000. You might have the option to put, let's say, $1,000 into WestJet stock. All right, stock, you know what, I won't go into what the stock market, you know, the stock market where people invest their money and stuff. But I mean, if you own a stock, that means you own part of the company, right? So a company has however many shares, let's say a million shares. If you own one share of stock, that means you own a little piece of the company, right? So if the company does really well, that means your money will, will grow. If the company does bad, then your money will go down. So you want the company to do well because then you can get more you're going to get more money, right? So so let's say they take let's say you contribute $1000 of your paycheck into WestJet stock, then WestJet would match that $1000. So you just now it's $2000 in stock. So you just made an extra $1000. Isn't that amazing? Right. So uh, so that's the kind of program they had. I don't know if they still have that program, but their their slogan was owners care. So what they were saying is we are a better airline than other airlines because our employees are actually owners of the company. A lot of not all of them, but, you know, I'll probably I mean, let me know down in the comments. Would you take that deal if you could give up a thousand dollars from your paycheck and then have them double that, like give a thousand dollars of their money into it. That's a great deal, right? I mean, that means over a course of a year, let's say, I mean, you'd, you'd have $12,000 free money. Yeah, that would be amazing, right? So obviously, if that was the case, you would really care about the performance of the company and you would try hard, right? You wouldn't be apathetic. You know how a lot of employees are just really apathetic. They don't care. 
if the, if the company does good or bad. At the end of the day, they get their money. Who cares, right? Um, so owners care, and that's true, right? If you're if you're an owner of something, you 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 tend to care about it, right? That's why you know people take better care of their homes than like a hotel room most of the time. You know, I don't really like staying in hotel rooms because like people don't really care about how they take care of the hotel room. Like on my trip across Canada, I stayed in so many hotels and you know, hotels kind of have that smell like there's a loud car driving past my house. Um, I'm rambling guys, sorry about that. But I know some of you guys like it when I ramble, when I go off on tangents. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, was, I stayed in a lot of hotel rooms on my Canada trip. And they kind of have that smell, you know, like kind of that maybe smoky. It's Even though a room is not, it's not a non-smoking room, someone probably smoked in there at some point. You can kind of smell the cigarette smoke in the room. And uh, maybe there's some stains on the carpet. And, you know, people... People don't really take good care of hotel rooms, right? Because they don't they don't care. They paid their money already. They're going to leave in the morning. Who cares? It's someone else's problem, right? So owners care. And um, that would be a good example of someone having skin in the game, right? So WestJet as a company could say, look, our, our company is better because our employees have skin in the game they really own part of the company so they care a lot all right so that would be a good example of that um here's an example you could say elon musk is a good ceo because he has skin in the game he has skin in the game right i mean elon musk is the ceo of tesla and i think his other companies like spacex and whatever so he's he's invested his personal money i think i mean most of his personal money is in these is, is in these companies um, and you know he, he, he could lose it he could lose all his money if the company doesn't do well you know some CEOs don't really care that much whether the company does good or bad because at the end of the day if the company tanks you know, tanks means to go down right if the company goes way down if it tanks they got their money, they'll move on and do something else with their life, right? But for something for someone like Elon Musk, I mean his he he poured his 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 blood, sweat and tears into the company. Oh, hey, there's a good uh, idiom. Blood, sweat and tears, right? If someone tries really hard and puts all their energy into something, they put their blood, sweat and tears into the company. You know, I'm always reading stuff about Elon Musk like he Sometimes he has meetings in the middle of the night with his people or he only sleeps a few hours a night or he's just trying so hard. I mean, he's, he's a very successful businessman. He tries so hard, right? He puts his personal energy and his money, everything into his companies, right? So he's a good CEO because he has skin in the game, All right, So it's a good example. Hey, let's do some homework. Um, I want you to make a sentence with one of these idioms. Okay, put your money where your mouth is or skin in the game. Choose one of these, make a sentence down there in the comments. Hope you guys are having a great day. As always, I love you so much. Take care, stay safe, stay happy. And as always, I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.